Okay, so welcome to Monday training once again. Um, today we're going to talk about um, we just God has just really shown me the the prevalence of the poverty spirit and um, orphan heart um, in the world. It, you know, within has said, but within the world, it's if if there's a pandemic, that's a pandemic uh, in, in the world. And, and someone can be um, have a lot of money, but still have a poverty spirit. It's all in how their mindset approaching money and finances uh, and also their time and their talent, right? It's how they manage uh, those things that determine whether you have a poverty spirit or a wealth, uh, a wealth mindset. Uh, and um, a, a poverty spirit and an orphan heart go hand in hand. They go together. All right, so we're going to talk about that today, and um, uh, just praise God. Last night, uh, He just gave me this um, beautiful way to illustrate it, <laughs> a, a great way to uh, to talk about this, and it's called the tale of two children. The tale of two children. So I'm going to share my screen, and there we go. So you're gonna see four children here, but I did a boy if you're a man, uh, and I did a girl if you're a girl. So just to, for I, you know, to help with identity purposes. But um, so we here we have uh, a boy uh, inside the circle, and we have a boy outside the circle, and we have a girl inside and a girl outside. So I'm a girl. So I'm gonna to refer to, I'm gonna to talk today as more about the girl, right? But you see what I mean? And you'll notice that, you know, these two boys, they, I mean, they kind of look the same and these two girls, you know, a little bit look the same, all right? Um, so it's a tale of two children. All right, the difference between this girl and this girl or boy and boy, right, obviously, these two are inside the circle and these two are outside the circle all right um and 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 what's what's the difference behind that all right well here's the thing this boy is actually prince george of england and this is his sister princess charlotte um so in england of course we know there's a monarchy and Queen Elizabeth is the uh, the uh, reigning monarch in that royal family, and her son Prince Charles is the next in line, and um, after him is uh, his son Prince William, uh, will will be the next in line, and after him will be Prince William. There's sorry Prince George right here. He is the what I think is called fourth in line. Uh, to take the throne. So uh, that's this boy. And now Princess Charlotte would be after him. So like the fifth in line to take the throne. So that's who these children are. Now, the reason why they're inside the circle is because they're, they're inside the kingdom of England, right? Um, uh, the, they're the, well, in fact, they're the royal family, but they're inside that kingdom. All right. Now, these two children were not born of royalty, right? This boy and this girl. The, so they're on the outside of that kingdom because they weren't born into royalty like, like these two children are. So, I mean, first thoughts are, well, that's really not fair, right? That's not fair. Why can't these two be inside the, the kingdom where these two children are? All right. Now, Let's talk a little bit about the, the prince and princess right here. Um, so these two children were, were born into the kingdom, like we said, all right? So along with that, right, um, th there's, there's a difference in their lives between living here and living here, right? A, a big difference, right? Now, we don't know what these children's lives are like. You know, we don't know, are, are they... Are they orphans living in an orphanage? Are they, you know, in a in a lower class family? Are they in the middle class family? Are they in an upper class family? You know, it, it doesn't really matter, but they're not royalty. So they're on the outside. All right. So 
well, let's talk about these children. Like, look at their little faces, right? They're, they're, these pictures are fairly recent. I think within the last year, these photos were taken. So they're young children. I think Prince George is nine right now. And I think Princess Charlotte is something like seven or something like that, or six or something. And, um, you know, so they're very young, right? So these children are growing up and they, they may or may not, they probably do not understand the magnitude of their position in life. They, they, they probably um, have been told, uh, been, it's been explained to them by their parents, um, but they really at this age don't grasp how important their role is. Like Prince George is going to be king one day, right? And, and if he, you know, dies or whatever, uh, uh, you know, God forbid, um, um, you know, Prince Charlotte would take, would take the, uh, the throne and be the queen, right? Like, so these children are born into positions of, of importance, of significance, of privilege, of, um, well, of responsibility, right? So they're going, they're being brought up in a way that's very different than these children, right? You know, these children would be being brought up, you know, uh, you know, to uh, let's just say they're just average middle class people, you know. Uh, well, let's talk about it from that perspective. If they're just an average middle class people, they're being brought up to, you know, go to school, be a good girl and boy, um, go to school so you can get a job and then provide for your family, you know, um, maybe being taught some good manners, uh, that sort of thing, right? Um, you know, I'm not, let's just say they're from, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, a, a lower class, like what the world calls lower class, uh, sorry, according to God, they're not lower class, but, you know, let's just say, you know, there's just really, they're in a home where there's really not enough to go around there, you know, um, maybe there's, uh, only enough food for one meal a day, uh, right. Or <coughs> maybe, um, they only have you know one outfit or or two sets of clothes to wear you know um you know in this case these children are being brought up just to survive right just to be able to have food for the day just to be able to um have clothes to put on um you know um you know or let's just say maybe these two children are um uh, you know, are born as orphans. So they, they maybe live in the street or something like, like that. And, um, and they literally, they don't have parents to look after them to, to provide uh, safety and uh, provision for them. So they have to survive on their own, right? We don't know. We, we're not sure about what those two children, but I mean, we can, I mean, it's actually all those children, to be honest, right? Um, but a very different a very big contrast to these two children, right? So imagine the protection around these children. Imagine like the the security forces, the the uh, the uh, what are they called? Um, bodyguards. Um, imagine, you know, I mean, there's parts of an entire military that are dedicated to protecting the royal family, right? Um, so they've got security people with them all the time, right? They don't go out without protection from a bodyguard, at least one, right? Um, because how important they are, right? They're going to rule a kingdom one day. So there's, they're highly protected. They're, they're, the, the palace that they live in is surrounded with, um, you know, gates and, 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 and wrought iron fences uh, and more military personnel to protect or police to protect them, right? So the the security around them is the highest you can imagine, right? Like the, the you can't get more security. So, um, um, uh, they also you know live in a large palace, right? So there's, I don't know how I don't know how many rooms are in their palace, but there would be many, right? many bedrooms, many, there probably as many kitchens even for different parts of the palace. Um, uh, there would be many living rooms, 
right? Uh, there would be a playroom, um, right? And 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 for them, you know, if they were, uh, you know, um, to, uh, um, you know, as far as eating goes, um, they just know supper is going to be, breakfast is going to be served at nine o'clock or eight o'clock in the morning and lunch is going to be served at noon and supper is going to be served at 5 p.m. And, um, and it just appears that the, the, the food just comes to the table and they just have to make sure they're at the table to, to be able to eat it, but they know the food will come, right? Um, there's never a doubt that there's food on their table, right? And it's prepared. They probably have seen the cooks in the kitchen, right? Uh, preparing it. They know how, how people have worked hard to have that food on their table, but, um, but it's just always there, right? And it's good food. Oh, it's like, it's the best food. And, and because these children are so important, right? Because they're going, well, Prince George is going to be king one day and maybe Prince Charlotte will be queen. We don't know. But um, it's important that they're provided the best food, the healthiest food, the choicest food, right? No chemicals, preservatives, um, and uh, a lot of fruit and vegetables. Um, they're given the best food, right? Okay. Well, well, let's compare that to these two children. Um, what kind of security is around them? Let's just take the middle class kids just to start with, right? You know, what kind of security do they have? Right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to talk mostly about uh, I, I mean, I'm familiar with North America. So, um, uh, you know, here, well, the chill, the mom and dad go to work. Right. And the children um, may. Uh, um, so the children walk to school on their own. Right. Um, and then walk home alone. Right. Um, and, you know, while they're at school, yep, the teachers are, there's a teacher assigned to the playground to watch over the kids to make sure they're safe, right? And if a stranger uh, walks onto the school ground, they're, they're told to leave, you know, um, and, you know, when they're in their classrooms, right? Now, some schools, <laughs> because schools have become a dangerous place uh, now because of mass shootings in North America, well, mainly in the United States, but, um, you know, so they'll lock the doors of the school so no strangers can get in and harm the children. Um, so there's a bit of security there. All right. Um, you know, and at nighttime, the parents will lock the doors to the house. They'll probably leave the windows open in, in, the, in the summer to get the nice summer breeze come in um, uh, to keep it cool while they sleep. Right. But there's no security guards right? None at all. There's no security guards. The most security is a locked door or a, um, you know, a teacher overseeing, or when they go out with their parents, their parents will be obviously keeping them safe, right? Definitely no bodyguards, definitely no locked gates around the house, right? Or the property, right? Whole different level of security here. All right. Now let's talk about food and like provision. All right. Now, um, these uh, let's talk with respect to food. These children um, here, um, well, depending on where they're at, if they're, they're uh, oh, actually, sorry, let's go back to the security. So I talked about middle class. Let's talk about like lower class or even children. Let's talk about children that live um, in, um, you know, well, let's talk about lower class. Um, uh, what, you know, so they may only have a single parent in the home right? A single parent who's running around trying to provide for the family. They've maybe got one or two jobs even, you know, just trying to provide. So the child is home alone a lot, right? And, and having to uh, look after themselves and protect themselves. Or sometimes, uh, you know, and when the, the, the single parent, usually it's a mom that's a single parent, but not always, um, you know, then she's tired from work and, and she's, um, uh, you know, got to make a uh, supper or meals for the children. And, uh, you know, so the level of protection is even lower, right? And, and let's now talk about children that don't even have a home or parents, right? They're living in the street. Um, I mean, there is zero protection. Um, I mean, when I was in Ethiopia, I saw 
packs of children uh, uh, sticking together, protecting one another. And the older ones, like the 10, 12, 13 year olds would protect the younger ones, but they, they had no, they had no weapons. They, they had no training in martial arts um, or, you know, um, you know, the, you know, very opposite to the security that these children have. All right. Okay. So now um, let's talk about uh, provision of clothing, right? Um, so we're talking protection and provision, right? So these children have, I mean, look at here, this uh, Prince George, he has a, an authentic uh, um, uh, um, British um, soccer jersey, right? From the, the British soccer team. He, he's got, that's an authentic jersey by Nike, no less right? So a very expensive brand. And she's got this beautiful designer winter coat on, right? And then, well, I mean, these children have tons of clothes, clothes for every occasion, because they are ambassadors for their kingdom, right? They're ambassadors. So they're often have to go out in public and, um, and represent the kingdom, right? So they need to have, they need to pre uh, present, represent their kingdom well, all right? Now these children, you know, middle class, you know, yeah, they've probably got, you know, a, you know, a closet or drawers full of clothes and they wear, you know, uh, you know, probably have several outfits they, they wear and, um, you know, uh, uh, mom and dad always, there's always clothes there for them. Um, the clothes aren't, yeah. And then, and then uh, lower class, well, maybe they have a couple of outfits, right? Uh, but they're definitely not going to be uh, the expense of clothing here. Um, and then the children that that live in the streets, well, you know, they're uh, I actually I'm not sure how they get their clothing, but they, I know there's uh, a way like through churches and stuff like that they they get donated clothing. Um, uh, so it's basically they get what they can get, right? There's no matching and coordinating outfits, right? Um, uh, yeah, and, and sometimes, uh, you know, these children don't have warm clothes for winter. Uh, they just have uh, what they need to get by. All right. So you can see quite a difference between these two children and these two children, right? Um, so let's just talk about the mindset behind someone who grows up here inside the kingdom and what's the mindset of someone who grows up outside the kingdom what what is that so i want to open that up like, like to, for feedback like so what do we think L let's start with these children right so what goes through their mind when they wake up in the morning so unmute and speak up what goes through their mind let's start with this what goes through these children's mind let's just say that they're the um let's just say that they're the let's just say um well any class middle lower class or, or street children what what would they think let's go with lower class and, and middle class like what would they think yeah the way i see these two funny pictures, as you have indicated, uh, I see the middle classes or the lower classes children, when, when they wake up in the morning, uh, they feel like they don't have chances in life right or maybe they feel uh more vulnerable like uh, they are isolated uh even uh, their mindset uh it's always having a, a limit that they cannot manage to go far in life or they cannot manage to be like 
the way their friends are because they have a boundary in their thinking capacity. And this is happening because of uh, uh, maybe uh, they don't have uh, people who are coming close to them to encourage them that they have a future. That was awesome. <laughs> I'm making notes. It's really good. That's awesome. Uh, no people to encourage, teach, protect, and provide. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really good. All right. So what about the contrast, Honest? So what would these children think when they grow up or when they wake up in the morning? The other side, when they wake up, uh, they have uh, confidence in life that, uh, yes, uh, they have a reason uh, to say we are alive because of this and this and this, because uh, they don't like that they, they don't like anything in life. If they want support, they will find the support is there for them. They, if they want encouragement, they will find the, the, encourage, the encouragement is there because there are always people who are looking them after. Uh, if, if, if they want like uh, entertainment, everything is already uh, uh, booked for them. They can do whatever they want in life. And because of this, uh, they have a good opportunity to think uh, more far in their life style because they, they cannot have the limit. Sure. It's really good. Really, really good. And, and, and based on what you said, I, I'm hearing there's someone there, like you said, there's people around them. Um, and what I hear those people saying is, is saying, you're a princess, you're a prince right? They're constantly being affirmed. Their identity is constantly being affirmed, right? Um, and their experience is abundance. That's their experience. They, they, it's all around them. Like they experience it. Um, uh, um, yeah. And do you have anything to add there, Fahiwat? I know Frehi was uh, struggling with her internet connections, so she might not she might be missing pieces here. But um, all right, well let, let's move on. Okay. Um, all right. So it kind of doesn't seem fair, does it? It doesn't seem fair just because of who, what parents you're born into determines your success in life, right? And really, to, that isn't fair, is it? It's not that it seems unfair. It isn't unfair, right? It's just not. So, but what can these two kids do about it? There's nothing they can do. They were, you know, Charlotte was born to Prince um, uh, uh, William and, and, uh, and Princess Kate, right? Uh, and I don't know, well, I, I, these are just children I found on Google, um, you know. They didn't choose where they were born. If these two, if they could choose, of course, they would choose this, right? They would choose to be born inside the kingdom, right? All right. So um, I think also these two children would kind of be on a position of on the outside looking in right um and 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 wanting what was here right and and maybe even envying those that were inside and envying prince william prince george and princess charlotte right um yeah 
Um, just add a, a few other thoughts that I jotted down when I was uh, thinking about today was, um, you know, on this side, they just don't know what the future brings, right? There's a sense of, I on, an honest did say this, like a sense of hopelessness, no opportunity, right? Um, but here, these, these, they know what the future brings. They know their destiny. Their destiny is to rule England, right? And to be, well, George will anyways, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, you know, probably won't take, unless something happens to Prince George, you know, she probably won't take the throne. But at the very least, she's a representative of the royal family, right? At the very least. So she has duties. So these children are being groomed, even right now, even from babies, they've been, they're being groomed and raised up to, to take the throne, to take their place as ambassadors um, uh, for the kingdom. All right. Um, so um, they, um, they're they born with a sense of duty that their life isn't theirs, right? But, but rather there's a sense of duty. And, you know, so in some cases, um, you know, uh, for example, um, you know, maybe when they get older, right, like maybe they're in their teens or, or 20s or something like that, um, you know, they're going to have responsibilities to go to uh, certain social engagements as opposed to running and playing with friends. Now, I know that I, I studied this royal family a little bit in preparation for this. Their parents are very good to make sure that as a young children, they have time to play and just be children, of course. Um, but but what I'm getting at is there's there's a sense of duty and responsibility that they have that these don't, these guys don't. These guys are just trying to survive day to day, right? Um, and don't see how they fit in, their importance in the world, in their families, right? But these two, you know, even at a young age, are starting to recognize, right, the important role they play. Um, so they have a sense of duty for their people, right? As they grow up, they'll realize we're assigned as, as you know, as, as royalty, we have a responsibility for the people we serve in our kingdom, right? Uh, and there's a lot of purpose uh, that goes along with that. Um, so they'll be... Um, They'll be trained. Um, let's see here. They'll be trained to be good managers, to be good, uh, to be good rulers of people, leaders of people, to be good rulers of the land, managers of the land, to be good managers of, of money, right? Of, of everything that's in their kingdom. They'll be trained from very young ages. They're going to get the best education on how to be good managers, right? Because of, of the high appointment they have, right? Um, um, and they realize, so like I said, their lives aren't their own, right? Uh, because of their position. And also, you know, the the palace they live in is now i know in england it's a bit different it works a bit differently but uh bear with me it's not the same in all kingdoms uh so i'm just going to talk now not just about england but in general terms but in in general terms it's the state or or the the kingdom that owns their palace right and owns their land right and they live on it right um their money also, right? They they live on kingdom money. It, it, it's the kingdom that pays them to work for the people, right? So their money isn't their own. Now, again, Britain is a bit different. They've structured themselves a diff bit different, but I'm talking in general terms, all right? Um, and they so they know that um, they also have a responsibility. Now, oh, let's let's contrast here. Right, uh, these children. Well, let's say they're not even growing up in a home. Right. Uh, well, uh, they're on borrowed land. Right. Like they're they they don't own 
anything either, but um, it's a, a matter of, of, of uh, just trying to find a place to sleep at night, right? Or if they're middle class, you know, their property is owned, could be owned or rented uh, by, by the family, but, um, but that property isn't necessarily about expanding the kingdom, right? It's just a place to live, a place to survive, right? A place to sleep. All right. Whereas everything here where, where these children are surrounded by, everything is about kingdom. Right. Um, I want to make sure I cover everything before I move on here. Um, all right. Let, let's just talk a little bit about. Um, opportunity like what honest brought up opportunity right how would these children um so so the like honest said these children here uh don't see opportunity it's basically i, I i'm just going to survive day to day even a middle class child really they're, they're more or less generally they're just going to school uh just to get a, a good grade or maybe they don't even care <laughs> Uh, but they're just kind of going through life really without a purpose, generally, uh, um, uh, just living day to day. You know, my teacher tells me to, to do my spelling homework or my math homework. I do my math homework, but there's no understanding of why they're doing math homework, right? There's just a bit of a, a lack of purpose there. Um, and again, they're, they're thinking, how do I survive? Often here, they're thinking, how, I, if only I had money, I could blank, right? I could have food, I could have clothes, I could have a home, I could buy the things I need, right? Whereas here, these children are thinking money is never a thought. A lack of money is never a thought that crosses their mind, right? Um, is just always there. So they never, ever, ever grow up thinking in lack because there's an abundance of food. There's an abundance of clothing. There's an abundance of, of security, an abundance of housing, right? They can go buy anything, anytime they want, right? Everything is an abundance, a never ending stream of provision, right? Whereas here, the mindset is there's not enough. There's never enough, right? And fair, the reality is, yeah, I mean, there is never, there is not enough food. There is not enough clothes. There isn't enough, you know, uh, housing, right? It's the reality for them. All right. All right. So as these children grow up, right, and now they're getting even more prepared, they're getting closer to taking the throne while George is getting to closer to taking the throne and Princess uh, Charlotte, she will be, you know, being groomed or trained to take, uh, you know, uh, an office of some sort of some sort of leadership, right, uh, for the kingdom, right. Um, so that what they're being taught or what the, the mindset that they're adopting is how can I grow my kingdom? How can I grow it? How can I, how can I bless the people? How can I uh, make sure we're all prospering? Um, my, and, 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 and it's a, a built in natural thing because God tells us to grow the kingdom, expand the kingdom, right? He tells us to, um, so it's a natural built in thing, whether we believe in God or not, is to always be expanding the kingdom, growing the wealth. This is how they're thinking. How can I grow the kingdom? How can I build wealth and wealth meaning right, let's, let's, wealth is part one part money. There's four parts to wealth. It's money. It's health. Um, it's relationships, uh, good, healthy relationships. And it's um, basically a relationship with God, the fruit of the spirit and a relationship with God. Those are the four parts of wealth. It's not just about money. That's what I'm referring to when I say wealth, right? So they're always thinking, how can I grow these things, 
right? That's their duty as king and, you know, princess. That's their duty. And they're taught from the very beginning, this is how you think. So that's how they think when they grow up, right? Um, these two children, you know, quite different, right? Um, they're taught, I don't have a responsibility for building a kingdom because I don't have a kingdom, right? I, um, I just need to provide for me, right? I just need to get through. I just need to get by, right? Um, so there's very, very little responsibility, level of responsibility for others. Now, uh, they will tend to be very generous. This is, this is my understanding, um, and give to others what they do have, but it's more out of a, a heart of just generosity and sharing and compassion, as opposed to building kingdom. There's a difference between, um, giving, uh, just to share, but, uh, there's a whole other mindset uh, to actually building kingdom. How can I use, uh, here they're, they're thinking, how can I use my time, my talent and my treasure to build kingdom? That's just how they think because they were born into, but the, the, these ones here are not thinking on that level, even as they get older, right? They're not necessarily thinking, how do I use my time, talent and treasure to build kingdom? That's not on their mind, right? Right. And, and not their fault, right? Just not their fault because they were born here and not here. It's just, it's not their fault. All right. So again, it's not fair though. It's not fair. All right. Um, let's just talk a little bit about money what will these what will these children do when they get uh um with their time okay let's break that down a little bit more so what will what will uh prince george and prince charlotte do let's just say they're a little older they're young right now so their parents tell them what to do with their time but let's just say they're in their 20s let's just say all right or or, or maybe older right but at least 20 Right. So they're thinking, what do I do with my time? Right. So they're thinking in terms of, again, how do I build the kingdom with my time? How do I look after myself so that I'm healthy and prepared to be able to look after my kingdom? Right. So they'll spend time exercising or rest, resting and relaxing. They'll spend time in leisure with friends. And so they'll take time to look after themselves. Um, so they're healthy uh, for their kingdom. You know, they'll also spend time working for the kingdom, right? Expanding it and building it. They'll spend time learning. How can I be a better uh, king or queen, right? A better leader. Um, how would they, oh, uh, so how would these children spend their time? Well, uh, let's see. Well, how would they, let's open it up. How would they spend their time? What does that look like? So you can unmute and chip in. All right. So I would, I would guess right? These, these children would spend their time trying to find food, right? Trying to stay safe. Uh, so again, it's, it's about self, right? Uh, and that's not wrong because they need food and they need to stay safe, right? Um, uh, um, you know, of course, they, I, I think, would think they want to go to school to learn, um, uh, but it also puts them around other people, right? Okay. Um, but they're thinking a bit smaller picture, right? About, about themselves, as opposed to a larger picture of a kingdom. All right. What would these children do with their talent, right? Their skills, their knowledge, their wisdom? Well, these children would, obviously, they're going to use it to build the kingdom, right? 
again, these children, actually, I'm sure these children aren't even aware of their talent to, you, to be able to use. Um, how would these children, let's just say, let's talk about treasure. If, if someone were to give them $100, right, what would they do with it? Well, these children have been taught to um, invest 10% or a, a percentage, I'm just picking 10. They've been, cho they've been taught to, in uh, to invest 10% to grow that $100 into $1,000. So they'll invest in something that's gonna create even more money. So they'll take a portion of it to invest, to make more money. They'll take a portion of it um, to uh, buy food, right? Necessities to live, right? And they'll take uh, a portion, let me think now, uh, a portion of it to save for something big they need to buy, right? Um, uh, and that something that they need to buy is usually something that will advance the kingdom, right? So, uh, um, yeah, that's generally how you, three ways to split up your money. All right. All right. Now, these children, if they're given $100, right? Generally, what's going to happen is they're going to think, I'm going to hold on to it for as long as I can, because I don't know where my neck, any more money is going to come from, or if money, more money is coming to me, they're going to hold on to it, right? And they're maybe, you know, if they're middle class, they put it in a bank account, right? But they're going to hold on to it and make it last as long as they can, right? They might give some of it away, but it's not, they haven't been taught to invest. They haven't been taught to use, uh, when they give money away, they haven't taught, been taught to invest in something that's going to make more money, right? Um, it's to ensure that more money is gonna come, right? Because when you invest money to grow it, then you know there's more money coming back to you. And when that money, that thousand dollars comes back, you take 10% of that and invest it wisely to make $10,000 out of it, right? And you know, then you know money's coming back. In fact, more money's coming back, right? You take 10% of that $10,000 and invest it wisely again in something you know is going to generate more money. And that this is. This, this is how these children think. They know how to grow kingdom. And that means grow money so that you can build money because you need build king because you need money to build kingdom. All right. But, but these children don't have not been taught that. And in, fa in fact, they've been taught that their whole life experience is lack. So hold on to what you have. All right. Um, okay. Now let's switch gears <laughs> let's uh okay let's get feedback comments anything to add to what i've said anything that i've I, i've missed that comment that you see how what is god showing you before we move to the next section all right Okay, let's switch gears. Yeah, maybe just go to, ahead, honest. Just, yeah, just to say a few words. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these pictures they are teaching me a lot of things. The first thing I can share is the, it tells us that in this world we have uh, two kinds of. Uh, people in life. There are people who have everything on their table. And there is also another set of people who they don't have what they can call a key or anything which can promise future in their life. So it tells us that we are living in a world in a world of these different uh, kinds of people. 
it can happen that maybe we are in part A of the people who are living in having the whole hope in life. They have everything. They, they cannot complain. Or maybe we are in the other side of people who are always complaining that why I was born? Why God is still keeping me? Because when they see left and right, they don't see anything which can prove that they are human beings. And it tells us that if we are in uh, type A of the people who have everything in life, how do uh, they act when they meet people in uh, group B, those who don't have anything? How do these kids act? act or how do these people act? Do they have uh, a loving heart to the ones who are living in those uh, bad situations? Do they feel that these are our fellow human beings? Do they feel like if I have a mother, even this one or so, she was born from a mother. Do they feel like if I have a home, even this one, she has a home as well. Do they feel that if I was created by God, even this one was also created by, the, by God? Do they feel that if I was created by God's image, even this one was also created by God's image, in God's image. So you shall find that if you have all these questions and you say, yes, the way I was created, even this one, even though he or she is having problems in life, but she was also created in the same image like I was created. The end result, you shall find that this person can also assist the other person because he shall always say, my, my way of living should be also the same way of this one's living. But if this person who is coming from the better home, he don't care or he don't think of the other uh, person. That means he, he shall be now the one uh, coming up with more problems, more than the ones this person was facing. Because he, whenever this person having problems can see this person, it shall be like someone who is bringing a lot of problems in life. It is now when you see criticism, because he, this, this guy or this person, he don't think like, the other person is a human being. So the, the only thing I have learned is if I'm in the better side of that person, the person who is having everything in life, I need also to, to be the game changer, someone who can also help the people in the other side to be the better people in life. Because God cannot help them direct, but he can use you to reach them. 
He can use you to raise them. He can use you to give them advices, teachings, encouragement. When they see you, they can have confidence that if this one managed to, to, to survive or to make it in life, even myself, I can do it because he shall always look on the steps you have moved. So these two, these two types of pictures, they are telling us a lot. And even if I'm in the other side of the, the kids who are living without a future, I need also to have a caring uh, heart to the ones who, are, who have everything. Yeah. Because it, it can happen that maybe uh, they are supporting you, or maybe they are trying to associate with you. So the way you act to them, it can also uh, increase the relationship between you two. You don't know someone who can bless your life. You don't know someone who can change your life. You don't know someone who can change you from level one to level two in life. So the way you treat people matters most. It can also help them to take you close to them because of your heart. So this is what I can say on these two pictures. All right, so let's let's break that down, okay? Let, let's let's evaluate that because I think this is a common thing in the world, all right? Um, and God is changing it right now because God is breaking the poverty spirit in the world right now. And I know not just within has said, but uh, other of my friends that in are in other um, movements. Um, uh, right now, God wants to break the poverty mindset and the orphan mindset. So let's look at this. So the really what you were saying, honest, was the, um, the 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 key piece. What you were saying is, what matters is what these ones think. How do they view these ones? What do they think? Right? How do they respond? Right? When they see these children. And what I wanted to say is, it doesn't matter what these, it doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter. Right? And, and here's why. If these children are looking to, I'll just pick the boys here. If this boy is always looking to this boy for provision, for protection, for encouragement, for you know anything, right? Purpose, identity. Um, he's then you you could say worshiping this boy. The, this boy is making this boy his god, because this boy is not his provider. This boy um, is not his protector, right? As soon as this boy takes his eyes, and I'll bring, this is now I'll start to bring God in. This boy, uh, we'll go further with this uh, uh, after we finish breaking down what you said, Honest. Um, yeah, this this boy here is making this boy his god, or this girl is making this girl his her god, her god, goddess, right? They are not the providers. Now there is, it is important to be generous, and it is important to um, <clears throat> uh, to like the Bible talks many times about being kind to the poor. All right, all right. Here's the thing. All right, so let's just say, let's look at this scenario. 
this boy is looking to this boy as his provider and protector. All right. Let's just go down that route. And this boy says, yes, I will be your provider. I will be your protector. I will give you a purpose, a worth, an identity. This boy then positions himself as God. Which is not right. We know that's that's not right. Okay. Now, let's, uh, let me just see here. Um, so you talked about a game changer. This boy could be a game changer for this boy. Okay. Well, so here's the thing. If this boy is giving this boy money, for example, or a home or clothes or whatever, right? The necessities, which this boy is ultimately, that's what he's looking for. Because uh, he's got, remember, he's got the mindset to survive. I need clothes. I need money. If only I had money. If I only had clothes. If only I had this, I could get ahead, right? Um, so this boy, Prince George, gives this boy money, right? Well, what's this boy going to do with that money? Well, we already talked about that. He gets $100. He's going to hold on to that $100. And he's going to, well, maybe he'll, he'll buy some food. Um, and he'll buy maybe some clothes if he needs it, um, but he's going to hold on to it because he doesn't know where more money is coming from, right? And if it's all gone, then he's going to look back to his God for more money. He hasn't been taught how to steward the money well, right? So what happens then, um, like, so this boy hasn't been taught to invest 10% to grow that hundred dollars, you know, into a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars. So this boy is never generating anything. He's never growing the kingdom. He's just using, right? And and, and never and never growing the kingdom. So then this boy, you know, so then this boy is out of the hundred dollars. He comes back to this boy. Yeah, I'm out of money. Can you give me some more? And so this boy, yep, I'm going to be your god. I'll give you more money gives him another hundred dollars. Maybe it lasts, I don't know, a month, a week. I don't know, you know, and the money's gone again because he's never been taught how to steward money. So what happens is, you know, he goes back again. I need another hundred dollars and again and again and again and again. And then eventually this boy's like, I'm out of money. You just keep like, you haven't done anything to grow the kingdom um, or, or, you know, um, uh, kingdom. Yeah, the kingdom. And so, um, eventually this boy runs out of money and then both of them are in the same position right so here's the thing that's the model that exists in the world today and it propagates these children to stay in poverty and these children or these people right we can put our own our own position in these in these places these people remain gods. They remain control in the world. They control the rich, control the poor, right? The borrower is, sorry, the borrower is slave to the lender. This boy becomes a slave to this boy, right? Um, that's a poverty mindset. This is what's happening in the world right now. We're all looking to the rich people for money, right? Um, and um, and that leaves us powerless, hopeless, right? Because generally we know the rich today, and not all of them, there are some good ones, but, but most in the world, they love their power. They want to be God. So they're going to keep giving out, oh, here's $100. Oh, here's, here's a little bit. Here's a little bit. Because it makes them feel powerful. Because they're gods, right? They've become gods. But I'm going to read this scripture. Here's the thing. Uh, Deuteronomy. It's Deuteronomy 8.18. I'm just going to read it. Eight. Eighteen. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth 
so confirms his covenant which he swore to your forefathers as it is today so he says but remember it is the lord your god for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and this is what we're talking about and this is a, a huge part of what has said is all about is we want to give these children the uh, show them their ability to build wealth and and a lot remember wealth is money health, uh, uh, health relationships and a relationship with god all right right and we don't do it by just giving money and be us being god giving money and keeping them in poverty the key is first to teach a wealth mentality which is exactly what we're doing today that's exactly what today is all about we as leaders need to think in a wealth mindset in order for us to lead our children that we serve into a wealth mindset it starts with us so um so yeah it means teaching how to manage money time talent and treasure how do how do we manage those how do we think like the children in here all right so here 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 in in the model let's just finish this part section off based on just responding to honest here this boy here well he's been taught right now so he's been taught to 10 percent. i invest in uh in something to be able to build more money so i've got more money coming in and um and then if he teaches the same principles like okay i'll give you a hundred dollars but what are you going to do with that hundred dollars does the boy have a plan does he have a plan of how he's going to then take you know pass on the generosity and and be able to um invest 10 percent of that hundred dollars right so ten dollars in something that's going to grow the kingdom right it's teaching wealth teaching this person to generate wealth so that then they become like uh wealthy right and then they then can treat teach someone else further down the line to grow wealthy all right and then that is the only way if it's a constant just giving 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 um then um this one stays in poverty all right okay let's let's continue on i want to move some things here hold on one second here all right switching gears switching gears i want to move hold on let's see if i can move these no just give me one second here oh goodness oh hold on give me one second here i just gotta and let me make another one oops what I want to do. All right. Now, oops. There we go. Okay. So now here we have we have the kingdom. All right. Now, what what I just described, uh, like what I've been describing all along, is the world's perspective on kingdom. This is the world's perspective on kingdom. All right. Um, now we're going to look at God's perspective on kingdom. Right. So we're going to take off. Uh, I do have sunglasses on. So so the world looks at the world through these glasses. Right. And this is how things should be. This is how things are. Now, 
We're going to take off those world glasses. And now we're going to look at the kingdom according to God's, through God's eyes, right? And so this is where we need to open our spiritual eyes to be able to see how he sees, right? So, um, and that, that takes, well, it's a lot, <laughs> right? To see the way God sees. We can understand it in our mind, but we want to try and get it down into our heart. How does he see kingdom? All right. And, and us, right? So with the way God looks down and he sees kingdom is he says, everything is mine. This is my kingdom, right? Everything is mine. I'm the king. All right. Um, let me just, oh, I see you just, you lost connection for a second on us. So uh, while you're gone, yeah. you're, that's okay. No worries. Um, yeah, I'm just, we're going to switch gears into, um, the next, um, section was, um, now, what I sh showed before, I moved just moved things around here, but what we were looking at was the world's way of seeing kingdom, right? The world sees Prince George and Princess Charlotte as, you know, future king and or queen and, um, and his ambassadors, right? Like, like, that's the way the world sees kingdom. So now we're going to switch, right? Now we're going to look at the whole diagram, the whole world situation through God's perspective right? So we're switching our lenses. All right. So here we go. Um, God, the King of Kings says, I am the King. I own everything. I own a cattle on a thousand hills. I own all the gold and silver. All the people are mine, right? He owns everything. So this circle now becomes God's kingdom. All right. And it doesn't matter where we were born into, what family or status we were born into, the richest of the rich to the poorest of the poor. We are all outside the kingdom. All of us. And we know, Anna said it earlier, it's because of Jesus right? God gives us the ability. Um, uh, let me just type this in. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Insert. Where did I? Jesus. So he provides Jesus as a way to get into the kingdom. All right. That's it says, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father is through me. Right. So yes. Jesus provides us a way to come into the kingdom. So here we go. Into the kingdom. And if they choose, right, if everybody has a choice. Right. And I think I need to make the circle bigger. We oh, oh, I love that. <laughs> yes. Hadn't planned on this. But as more people come in, guess what happens? The kingdom grows. We have to make the circle bigger. Oops, let me. Uh, there we go. The kingdom grows. All right. So. Now everyone's everyone. Is inside the kingdom. If they choose, if they choose uh, Jesus, right? They're inside the kingdom. So now what happens? What kind of a change of mindset does that mean for these children? And what kind of a mindset does that mean for these children? So let's start with these children. What does that mean for them? So I'm opening it up if, if anybody has an answer. What kind, how has their mindset changed from where they were before to this now, to God's view? Yeah, I think uh, 
because the all in one circle yeah. it can tell them that uh, they are the same with mm. the other children in God's creation. Yeah. And what about these children in that in that context that these children see, oh, we're all the same. What about these children? Would they see the same thing? Yes, they will see, they will see the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. As far as status goes, we're the same. Right? So these children are now not looking like this boy isn't looking to this boy to be his God anymore. Because here is his God. How would, uh, yeah, so that talks about how the, this, their mindset would change. How else? So now think of when these two were inside in the world's kingdom, when these two were inside, right? They learned how to steward their time, talent, and treasure. They learned how to, that their lives weren't their own, that they were there to serve their kingdom. They were to um, expand the kingdom, right? Ownership of everything belonged to their worldly kingdom. But now the difference is they have to transfer that ownership. Now it's Jesus, it's God that owns everything, right? So there's still a shift for them. There's a shift of thinking, right? Same with these, with these two. Oh, Jesus. Um, well, let's, let me just think about that. Like, uh, does anybody have an answer for that? Uh, about ownership of things? How does that transition for these two? I think for these two, I, let's just brainstorm. Like, how does how does it change for these two? I mean, I think first of all, you know, knowing God as the Father, they would suddenly feel like they had parents. Isn't there a sense of peace that comes going like, oh, I have a father. I have a father who loves me. They would think, they would, they would come to, as they came to know him as their father, more and more they would understand that it's it's god that's their provider and their protector so if they're if we're looking through our spiritual eyes just like elisha's servant opened his eyes and saw the angel armies remember they that they, they were uh, uh elisha and his servant were were being surrounded by um enemy armies <coughs> and then and the servant was afraid like oh no oh no we're not safe we're being we're going to be a, we're going to be killed we're not safe right but then elisha said open your spiritual eyes and look and when he did he saw an angel army all around them much much bigger than the earthly army that was coming after them as we see with our spiritual eyes, those angel armies really are there for every one of us. God has sent, we each have angels assigned to us to protect us. Our whole mindset of not being safe changes. But it's, it, 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 it's a matter of believing what God says in his word. And it's a matter of like, like really believing, not knowing. I know the fact God is my protector. But it's believing it and seeing it through your spiritual eyes 
and, and asking God, let's just ask God right now, would you give everyone spiritual eyes, open, awaken spiritual eyes to see the angels, like literally see the angels you've assigned to each one of us. Show us, give us those spiritual eyes, open them, awaken them. I call everyone spiritual eyes. I call you to awaken, open these spiritual eyes, open and see that God doesn't just say he's going to protect you, but he does. In Jesus' name, I pray that in the coming days, all of our spiritual eyes open wider and that we can see. It's not fuzzy or anything like that. Just take the scales off our eyes to see in the spirit with our spiritual eyes of what really is there. If you believe that story in the Bible is true, it's not just a story like a storybook, but it's true. They are there for you. How would you feel? Like, think about that. Knowing right now, right now, you have at least one angel standing in protection on guard for you. How does that make you feel? I don't talk about provision, right? Remember when in the worldly kingdom, these two had all kinds of food, clothing, housing, you know, everything was there for them. They never, never thought, they never thought in terms of lack, right? Um, but, and the, but these ones, on, when they were on the outside of the world kingdom, um, everything was in lack, right? But now, now God, I ask you to open our spiritual eyes to see your provision, I ask you to open our spiritual eyes to see our heavenly bank accounts that aren't just waiting for us when we get to heaven because we don't need those bank accounts when we get to heaven. <laughs> we don't need them there. Everything's just provided. But there's a bank account in heaven. It's there right now. And, and there, there is a way to access that bank account, that treasure for us to be able to use on earth right now to do the ministry. The, well, I, we're not even using the word ministry anymore because that's an old word. Um, to do the mission that you called us to. God, would you open our spiritual eyes to see just how big these bank accounts are? And not just me, right? Don't look to me like this boy looked to this boy looked to Prince George for as his God to be a provider. No, 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 no. Let us look up to God to see our provision. That the bank account is there, just like those angel armies did exist. That was not just a storybook in the Bible, not just a fable or a fairy tale. It was true. Those angel armies were there. Just like that, our bank accounts in heaven are there. Right? That is not a fairy tale. Um. Sorry, just give me a second here, guys. Need a scripture for later. God, open our eyes to be able to see what you have allotted for each one of us. Open our eyes to see that it is way more than we can possibly imagine. Just like those angel armies, it says, I can't remember how many rows deep. It was a circle of angel uh, uh, soldiers, and they were lying, they were. Uh, but there were deep, so like five deep or something like that. There was just so much, right? God, help us to see with our spiritual eyes and show us in our hearts just how much is there for us. 
Now, how do we access that? How do we access that? Well, you can ask, right? He says, ask, seek, knock, right? But let's look back. When this boy was looking to Prince George for money and Prince George just was, you know, giving him, oh, here's $100, here's $100, here's a dollars here's But then this boy just kept not growing the kingdom with it. Well, eventually Prince George has to stop giving because he says, you're not being a good steward with the money. You're not multiplying it like the parable of the talents, right? You're not multiplying it. So no more, right? Just like the one talent guy. No more because you're not growing the kingdom with it. But when Prince George saw, would see, because Prince George has been taught, right? to invest 10% to make more money off of, to grow the kingdom, right? Um, uh, he's looking for wise investments. He's looking for where can I invest my money where I'm going to grow it 10%, or, sorry, where I'm going to grow it and build the kingdom, right? When this boy you know, so, so he would have learned that from his parents, right? Who would be up here to him, right? When this boy looks to his parent, the teaching, but when this boy looks to this parent and, and, and says, I need, I need money, I need a hundred dollars, right? Or a thousand, whatever you need, right? And he says, how are you going to, how, my son, how are you going to grow the kingdom with it? How are you going to multiply the money I give you? It's the parable of the talents, Matthew uh, twenty, uh, Matthew twenty five. How are you going to grow my kingdom with it? Show me. Tell me how how you're going to do that, and then I'll give you the money. And then he says, "I want to see." It says, "What you uh, in Matthew twenty five? You've been faithful with a little, and now I will give you more." Right when this boy shows, right that he uh, he's not just knows how to build wealth but he actually does it right even if he gets ten dollars and he invests ten percent one dollar and maybe he makes five more dollars with that one dollar that's all it takes all it takes um so this boy has shown just like the five talent and the two talent men I can, I can build more, I can build kingdom. I can build wealth. Then what does it say? I will give you, I'm not, you've been faithful with a little, I will bless you with much, much more. All right. And I'm talking, people say, build the kingdom. People say, bringing souls in, bring it like people being saved. Yep. That is part of it. But he actually says, Matthew 25, it's also about building money financial wealth remember wealth is money a uh, health relationship and a relationship with god fruit of the spirit right all of them we need to grow that's building kingdom building wealth or money building health building relationships and building our relationship with god that's wealth. that's building kingdom all right um Right. And it, I mean, and this all ties in. I'm going to read Malachi 3.10 again. Bring the whole tithe or 10% into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. That's what I'm talking about. That's the bank account we have in heaven to draw from. That they, he would pour out so much. There's so much blessing there that we will not have room enough for it. That's what these bank account, the, the our heavenly bank account looks like. So how do we build wealth? We look to God, God as our God and not people as our God. Number one. Number two, we are wise stewards with the little we have. We invest 10, at minimum 10%. We invest it to build more. Now, 
let's talk about what to look for when you're investing, right? Where does that 10% go? Well, you know, commonly it's known, it's been taught by the church, um, you know, give the, your 10% to the church, right? Now we know that, um, uh, um, well, let's, let's look, <coughs> sorry. Um, uh, just give me one second. Um, I'm just going to find the scripture. Um, four. Okay, so uh, Mark 4, uh, starting at 3. Listen, a farmer went out to uh, sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Uh, some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly and caused the soil, uh, but because the soil was shallow, uh, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they were and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear green. Still other feed, uh, uh, seed fell on good soil and came up, grew and produced a crop multiplying 30, 60 or even 100 times. The key is. Invest your 10% in good soil. Find good soil that's going to multiply 30, 60, or even 100 times. What is good soil, right? Well, uh, I'm going to say people have been tithing into churches, and I'm not saying that's a wrong thing, but what I'm saying is, is every church good soil? What are churches doing with their money? And again, not every church is not every church. I'm not talking about every church, but some churches, the 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 past the lead pastor is being convicted of pedophilia. Some churches uh, are are uh, the pastors are being um, uh, uh, ca caught with um, cheating on their wives. This is truth. I, like I'm not going to name names, but I know a specific world renowned pastors this is what they're being they've been convicted of the one that was actually well one that i know of was convicted of pedophilia um in australia actually i i believe he, i'm i think he committed suicide before he was even convicted right so investing in uh, the churches are not always good soil and God is exposing this, right? Remember seven mountains prophecy. He's exposing the evil on all the seven social mountains, including the, 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 the religion mountain, right? So find good soil and invest. All right. Now um, this, I, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to say this. This is where I've been calling all of us to invest in has said, if you believe has said is good soil, if you if you're hearing God, if you're being fed, if you are growing, if you are if you see this is definitely where God is moving. If you see testimony, then 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 it's good soil. All right. Um. Okay, where was I? I went off track. Oh, right. Uh, another one, uh, uh, Proverbs 31, 16, she sees a good a field, has good soil, buys it and plants a vineyard. So she plants a vineyard, so she invests, plants a vineyard, 
so that it can uh, uh, um, so that it can bear fruit, right? It's it's it, this one is this one is a I guess not a parable, but he's describing a a, a righteous wife, a righteous woman, or man. Um, so and so grapes are 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 to nourish, right? That's or to bear fruit, right? To nourish and um, and prosper people, and it's also seeds have grapes you plant some seeds and you grow even more grapes right you're expanding the kingdom all right so here we go let's see where are we at now so um it's about okay god's view of kingdom if we look through our spiritual eyes god really is our protector and he really is our provider not just in a spiritual sense in a real physical sense. And I just believe that we've been so many generations of not seeing the outpouring of God's blessing that we've lost it. We've lost that. That really, God does want to pour out his blessing. When he fed the um, the Israelites, the quail were everywhere. Like they were, they were, they were covering the ground. It was an abundant amount of quail, which is a, a luxury meat. Their eggs are considered a luxury egg. They're very expensive, right? You know, he does like literally in a physical sense, but we've we've twisted the gospel to accommodate the fact that we've been in a drought, right? We've been in a drought where we have not seen the outpouring of God's blessing like it has happened in past times. And we need to get back to that, right? So we've, we've, I don't know, watered down, we've made excuses. Oh, well, God will do it in his own time. Well, yeah, of course, there is a timing, but we have a responsibility, right? We have a responsibility to actually take action um, according to God's ways. And we, we actually literally tap into the miracles of abundant provision, <coughs> the miracles of angel armies around us that changes the way we pray that changes the way we walk about our day and remember the other before <clears throat> when i had you know these two were inside the kingdom and these two were out right just the abundant level of actual literal protection that is there for us and provision money that's there for us all right um Okay, let's see, where are we going now? Um, okay, let's, let's kind of land this plane. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's wrap this all up. Um, and because uh, actually we, we've been a while, so I wanna, let's just wrap this up. Okay, let's talk about this. Um, let's change some things. Uh, what do we wanna change? We wanna, I'll just put this. All right, and move this guy out. All right. Let's just narrow this down even further. All of us here have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We are, you know, praying. We are reading our Bibles. You know, we are proclaiming the gospel. We are witnessing to people. Yeah, we've joined God's kingdom. Okay, good. Step number one, check. <laughs> All right. Now let's let's just narrow this down a little bit. All right. I want to go back to my analogy. <clears throat> well, actually, it wasn't an analogy. It was it's truth of how God designed the family. He said, uh, the, the I am the head, right? And then uh um of man, and the man is the head of the family, and the woman is to submit to the man um just as the body submits to Christ. All right. So we I'm just reviewing all that. Now, just this is such a beautiful way to explain this is the man and the wife, the husband, the, um, the, the father and mother, th they have that role, that order, because it's a role play of how the body submits to God. So it's a role play. The, the, the man represents God and the wife represents the body. So we, um, as they live and as they interact with one another, they interact with another in that way. How does uh, the, the wife, the body submit to God? How does the wife submit to the father? All right. And likewise, 
the father loves the um the uh the wife just like god loves the body right so um it's not what the world thinks about submission right so there's that role play all right everything in the kingdom like in heaven is replicated on earth right that i therefore i just said that role play that example we we do it in a physical way to bring heaven to earth we actually play that out in the role between uh, the relationship between the man and wife all right in similarly coming into the kingdom right so again here's the kingdom here's the kingdom all right and i'm gonna now do a substitution oops all right so here's the kingdom of, of Hesed, right? Um, let me get rid of this. There we go. All right. Here's the kingdom of Hesed. And there are other kingdoms, right? There are other movements happening all around the world. Just as wonderful. <laughs> Maybe more wonderful. I don't know. But um, here we have God has given us a kingdom or family, if you will. Remember, these guys were part of the royal family right? He's given us a royal family because God is the king of kings. He's given us a royal family. Now, we get to choose whether we stay on the outside, we come to the edge, we come a little further, a little further, a little further, right? Let me interchange this. Oops. Let's go back. Oops. Okay. Even in. Oh, hold on. Sorry, guys. There we go. Even if we're talking the bit, the full kingdom, right? Jesus is the king, right? We're looking at that. If we talk in those terms, here we are. We get to choose. Oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I'm going to stay right here on the edge and with my commitment. Or I can move a little further in. I'm going to commit a little bit further. Well, I'm going to commit further, further, further until we're right in the middle. Now, remember, we, we've talked about this before in citizenship. This is citizenship. All right. The level of commitment the level of coming into the kingdom, whether you're here in the core, in the middle, taking leadership, or you're outside, which is unsaved, by the way, not believing, and to the edge, right? Well, there's a big difference here. And it's not about receiving. It's not like I'm going to wait here until I get what I need, right? Well, that's a poverty mindset, right? Or we come here, we come here. What it is, it's about commitment because Jesus is there. It's there. The kingdom is there for anyone, everyone who wants to join. It doesn't matter if you've killed 100 people, the kingdom is there for you. All right. It matters on how you commit, right? Jesus is already committed to you. Am I committing? And, the, and here's the thing. It comes down to time, talent, treasure. How much are you willing to commit? And you get to choose how far you come into the kingdom. And remember, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. How much of your time, talent, treasure are you investing in the kingdom? That is your commitment. Just like a man gets down on his knee, right? And he commits to a woman. He gives, he gives her his time, his talent, and his treasure. He's giving her a nice ring, right? Um, and he's agreeing to protect her and provide for her because she's the body and he represents God, right? She then has to make the decision of, yes, I will join in covenant with you. I, my money is your money. My, anything I own is yours. My life is yours. It's the same. The, all these role plays that we do on earth, <laughs> it's all rep, same thing in the kingdom. How much do you commit? of your time, talent, and treasure. That determines how far into the kingdom you come. Let's 
swap it out because remember it's about role plays here we go now it's has said a kingdom that god has i pretty sure everyone can agree now ordained and anointed by god uh, just by the testimonies we're getting and how we're hearing from god um and growing you get to choose where you come into the kingdom it's a role play and it represents your walk with god they're interchangeable right you're in you know i mean obviously first of all you have to stand out here and going is this for god from god right just like any believer would have to say hmm should i follow this jesus or not i need to see the fruit right and then once you do then you come in same with has said do i see the fruit right is there godly teaching are there are people being uh uh are people being fed right is there testimonies are people growing are things moving well then you know it's from god all right then again you get to choose now remember what we did before <laughs> oh my goodness i love god because you know what this i i this part of the teaching only came out as i've been doing it i didn't plan on this but as more people come in and commit where are we right and if i had more pictures more and more and more what happens to the kingdom the kingdom grows right the circle has to get bigger to accommodate everybody right but it's not a matter of staying on the outside and watching and waiting to see what happens or watching and waiting to see what you get before you commit no 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 that's not what the kingdom is all about the kingdom is about giving and committing and covenant so the more you commit the more the kingdom grows you are the kingdom oh thank you god thank you god I think I think I'm going to stop there. We've been two hours, so I think that's good. I, I could go on, but um, but you see, this is the valley of the dry bones. That was another scripture. Out here, we're separated from the body. Oh, right. That's um, oh goodness. Uh, that is uh, Second Corinthians, uh, twelve one to two. That's uh, well, actually, let me just read that. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry. Have it marked here second corinthians 12 1 to 2 um now about spiritual gifts brothers this is your talents <laughs> um i do not want you to be ignorant you know that when you were pagan somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols therefore i tell you oh my have i got the right one no that's not the right one sorry wrong scripture <laughs> sorry so first corinthians 12 starting at 12. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. So it is with Christ. So when we're out here, we're separated from the body. We're like an arm that's been amputated and is laying on the ground and it can't do anything on its own. An arm uh, laying on the ground, separated from the body, can't do anything. An eyeball laying on the ground, can't even see it can't see because it only can see when it's attached to the body right a foot right it can't walk and do its function when it's not attached to the body it's dead it's a dry bone but when it comes into the body right it can function as a foot or an eyeball or an arm right when um, and not only that, think about this. If this is, let's just say the, the eyeball, and this is the foot, and this is the arm, and this is the nose. Um, as people come in, the whole body starts coming to life, just like the valley of dry bones. It comes to life, and the body starts really functioning, right? Well, what if we had two eyeballs? What if we had two arms? What if we had two feet, right? Think this, yes. Oh, goodness. Thank you, God. He's just giving me these words as I'm speaking, right? So here's your action step. Will you commit 
time, talent, and treasure to the body of Hesed. The good soil, if you see it, and I invite you to test it, right? What is your commitment today? Will, are you laying on the outside or are you coming in? Maybe Hesed is not your kingdom to belong to. Maybe God has called you to a different kingdom. You know, um, what I'm seeing today, what God showed me on the weekend is people are so distracted around with Hesed specifically, serving in places that they've always served. You know, whatever that is, they're serving in these places, but these places are not, and I'm saying workplaces, churches, I'm just going to be bold, <laughs> workplaces, churches, um, groups of people, uh, ministries, they're serving these places because they've always served in them, or they've got a big name or whatever like that, right? But remember, he, we're in a new era. He's switching things out. He's tearing down all the old uh, mountains and things. There are new mountains he's building. So I'm calling us to invest and commit in covenant relationship to has said, if God has called you to this uh, this movement to serve. If he's called you to a different movement, then I say go and give all your time, talent, and treasure to that. It depends on where you're called. But if it's here, um, join us more. Wherever you're at now, I invite you more. All right. All right. I just want to, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to close in prayer and then I'm going to stop recording and we'll do uh, a, a, some quick questions. All right, God, thank you for the teaching today. I started off with a few basics that you gave me uh, yesterday and you just took it and you put meat on those bones. Uh, just thank you, God, for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're doing and has said, like I prayed earlier, God, give us your spiritual eyes to see what really is kingdom. What really is there, but we our eyes have been blind by the world, um, by the teachings we've had. We've grown up as orphans. It doesn't matter how much money our parents had. It doesn't matter even if we were royalty, like earthly royalty. But we grew up, you know, as orphans, not knowing you. But now you're pulling us in. You're saying, "Come into my kingdom," right? Um, so God, I just ask you, open our spiritual eyes so that we can truly see. God, I pray that hearts are moved by these words, by this teaching today, because this teaching came from you. You use me as your vessel to speak your message. And I just thank you, God, for the privilege of serving as, as your servant, as your ambassador, as your queen um, of, 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 of delivering your message, God. I just ask you to bless everyone. I guess ask you to bless their finances, bless their homes, bless their families, bless their mental and physical health. Um, um, and bless them with a relationship with you, God, that they would through this and any, any other things that they would have a greater understanding of who they are, that they are not on the outside if they choose, that you want them in. You're like the father of the prodigal son waiting for your sons and your daughters to come home so we can be in covenant with you and experience the fullness of the blessing of you thank you jesus we pray this in jesus name amen